This is geometry lesson 1-2, ordered pairs as points. In this lesson, we're going to define, define the point in the line as it pertains to a coordinate plane. First of all, what is a plane? A plane is a flat surface, like a tabletop or a tennis court, but the planes in this situation have no edges and no boundaries. You have studied these planes many, many times when you were in algebra last year. You graphed lines, you graphed points, and you had equations for those lines, and so that's what we're going to look at in this lesson. First of all, a point is an ordered pair of real numbers. So if you look here, you see this set of coordinates for 1, and that pertains to this point. It, on the graph, it has a horizontal movement of 4 and a vertical movement of 1. So if we were going to look at the coordinate or at point B, we would look for the coordinates. What is its horizontal movement? Negative 2 and its vertical movement is 3. In Euclidean plane coordinate geometry, a line is considered to be a set of ordered pairs of real numbers, satisfying an equation of the form ax plus by equals c, where a and b are both not zero. As you can see here, I have three types of lines. I have the horizontal, the vertical, and the oblique lines, all of which still made up with a set of by or made up by a set of ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. So in this situation of the horizontal line, the equation is y equals 1.5, but if we were to put that in standard form, that would be 0x plus y equals 1.5. That means our a is 0. If I were to insert any of these points that fall on the line, they would all satisfy the equation y equals 1.5. So if I put a negative 4 in place of x, negative, or 0 times a negative 4 plus the y, which is 1.5, that would equal 1.5. Same thing over here with the vertical line, but in this situation, instead of the a being 0, it's the b that's 0. So it's x plus 0y equals negative 3. Let's take one of these points. Negative 3 goes in place of x, 4 goes in place of y, so a negative 3 plus 0 times 4 equals a negative 3. That is correct. Then we have the oblique line. That's where we have a value for both a and b. In this case, it happens to be 1, 1x one plus 1y one equals 3. So we can take any of these points and insert them into the equation, and it will satisfy. 0 in place of x, 3 in place of y, so 0 plus 3 equals 3. Equations for lines also can take on another form. They can take on the slope-intercept form. We studied that last year in algebra, and as you remember, the equation, or the form of that equation is y equals mx plus b. Remember, the m stands for the slope, and the b stands for the y-intercept. Here you can see the formula, formula for calculating the slope. That would be the change in y. So you subtract your two y values, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and your change in x, so x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So remember, the slope is the ratio of the difference between your y coordinates and the difference between your x coordinates. The first skill you'll be asked to perform in this lesson is to be able to graph the line in slope-intercept form. So here I have an equation the graph, to graph the line with the equation y equals 3x plus 1. First thing we want to do is plot the point at the y-intercept. So our y-intercept here is at 1. So I'm going to just plot 1. Then we want to advance according to the slope. So we have a horizontal or a vertical movement of 3 and a horizontal movement of 1. So 1, 2, 3, 1. And then we'll do it one more time, 1, 2, 3, 1. Those three ordered pairs are considered points, and in this situation, or in Euclidean geometry, two points determine a line. I like to put three in just for, just to make sure I get a nice solid line. So here you have the line for the equation y equals 3x plus 1. The next skill you'll be asked to perform in this lesson is to write an equation for a line given two points. So we know that if you have the slope of a line and you know its y-intercept, we know how to write an equation for that line. So what we need to do is find the slope first. So we have our two coordinates. 
or two set two points with our coordinates. Eight minus two would be our difference in y's, and one minus four would be our difference in x's. So eight minus two is six. One minus four is negative three. And if you simplify six over a negative three, you see that that's negative two. So our slope for this line containing these two points is negative two. So we know we can put the negative two in place of our m. So now we need to find our b. So what we can do is substitute one of our given points to find that b. So as you can see here, I chose to substitute four and two in place of x and y. So you can see I use this point here. So if we plug that in, bring down the two, negative two times four is negative eight plus b. So now then I can use my simple algebra skills, move the eight over, two plus eight is 10. So I know b is 10 or that is my y-intercept. So now I can plug those two things into my equation, negative two for m, 10 for b, and I get the equation y equals negative two x plus 10. So the equation for my line containing the 4, 2, and 1, 8 is y equals negative 2x plus 10. The third skill you're going to be asked to perform in this lesson is to convert a linear equation in standard form to slope-intercept form. So we're going to use the example of 2x plus 5, y equals 10. That's our standard form. And we're going to try and move that to slope-intercept form. And we know slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, so y being on the left and everything else being on the right. So we want to isolate y all by itself, so I need to get 2x out of the way, and I need to have the 5 move out of the way. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 2x from both sides. So that would give me 5y over here equals a negative 2x plus 10. Then I'm going to need to divide both sides by 5 to get the y all by itself. So when I do that, I get negative 2 divided by 5x plus a 10 divided by 5, so that would give me 2. So remember, when you divide both sides by 5, you gotta do you got to divide everything over here by 5. So that leaves me with y equals a negative 2 fifths x plus 2. So as you can see, I have three examples for you. I'd like you to stop the video at this time, try the three examples, start the video again, and check your answers. As you can see here, I have graphed this equation y equals 1 half x plus 2. It had a y-intercept of 2, so I plotted my point 2, and it had a slope of 1 half. So that means it has a vertical movement of 1 and a horizontal movement of 2. Vertical movement 1, horizontal of 2, and then I connected my line. For number 2, I needed to write an equation for the line containing the points negative 3, 3 and 6, 6, which means I need to find a slope and I need to find a y-intercept. So if I calculate my slope by finding my difference between my y, 6 minus 3, and 6 minus a negative 3, that gives me then 3 over 9, which simplifies to 1 third. So I can put that 1 third in place of m. Then I can find my b by inserting one of my coordinates, or one of my set of coordinates. So 3 is my y and negative 3 was my x. So a negative 3 times 1 third would give me a negative 1. If I move that over to the other side, that now makes 4 equaling b. So I can plug my slope and my y-intercept back in my equation. I get y equals 1 third x plus 4. The last thing you were to try was to convert the equation 2x minus 5y equals 8 into slope intercept. So I move the 2x over to the other side by subtracting 2x on both sides. That left me with a negative 5y equaling a negative 2x plus 8. Then I needed to divide both sides by negative 5. So that left y all alone here on the left and left me with a negative 2 over a negative 5 which simplifies to 2 fifths x plus an 8 over a negative 5 which means I have a minus 8 fifths. So my equation for 2x minus 5y equals 8, move to slope-intercept form as y equals 2 fifths x minus 8 fifths. This concludes lesson 1, 2.